back by popular demand in today's video I'll be transforming even more Goosebumps books into Lego. So strap in as we once again return to the creepiest book series of your childhood. To start, we're going all the way back to the book that began it all, Welcome to Dead House. When the Benson family learns that a long lost great uncle has died, they pack their bags to move to Dark Falls where they inherit an old mansion. And they eventually learn that the town and their new home is inhabited by the living dead. I began by laying down a cobblestone sidewalk in front of where the house would be. After that, I set up this wooden gate and then began on the porch. It has these wooden steps as well as these black ball pieces that I referenced from the cover. So I decided to try to build the house with as many sand blue pieces as I could find. That's an extremely rare Lego color that I don't have hardly any of. To get the most out of them, I built the plates facing out rather than up to show off more of the color. On the second floor, I set up this balcony area as well as the roof. Initially, I used this open door since it looked a bit more like the cover, but changed the to these creepy black windows that aren't as accurate but look better overall. For many figures, I added the Benson family as well as their dog, Petey. I also made some of the living dead that inhabit the town. Spoiler warning, but the living Living dead in the book actually killed the dog because he could sense that they were dead before the rest of the family realized it, which doesn't sound elementary friendly if you ask me. I hate it when the dog dies. For a bonus fact, R.L. Stein admitted that he thought the first book was too scary when compared to the rest of the series, since he was still getting used to the right mix of humor versus scares. Moving to the inside of the house, I added some creepy pages tacked to the walls as well as some loose floorboards. I built this old table with this quill and inkwell as a nod to R.L. Stein writing the books. There's these old candles too as well as this spider web. On the other end of the house, I added in this wolf bust as an easter egg for werewolf skin. You'll also find this old table stacked with spooky books, this chest of drawers with a lamp, and an old wicker chair that can spin. There's also a skeleton hidden in the house's foundation. In the attic, you'll find more loose floorboards boards with bones on them, a tea set, an axe, and some of the Benson's moving boxes. For some finishing touches outside, I added the sinister looking tree as well as some dead bushes in front of the porch. In spite of only having a literal handful of sand blue pieces, I think the final product turned out really well. But to finish it off, I wanted to capture some of the orange light from the original cover, so I pulled out the LEDs again. And after taping them down, I really think it helped give the house the foreboding look that we see on the original cover. Our next cover is another absolute classic with the werewolf of Beaver Swamp, which tells the story of a town that is terrorized by a legendary werewolf with the main character Greg trying to figure out who it could be. I started with a lime base plate and laid down the rocky area for the werewolf to stand. For it, I'm using this warg that released in the Hobbit sets because Lego has never released an actual molded wolf. <laughs> The funnest part of the build was getting to use a ton of these clear greenish pieces to create the poisonous look of the swamp that ended up looking really good. After that, I set up some viney trees and then laid down the purple backdrop before adding some more branches and sprouts. I created this full moon that uses some upside down wedging techniques to attach to the background. I then finished off the scenery with one last tree. On the cover, you can see the boy's clothes, so I thought this torso with slash marks from Owen Grady would work really well for it. And with that, we've finished another cover. Next, we have How to Kill a Monster. It's not a cover I remember from my childhood, but it definitely reminds me of Monster Zine, with the paws looking a lot like a green version of Sully. The story is about two kids who visit their grandparents, but find out that a monster is trapped inside one of the rooms and is trying to escape. This one was fun because of the unique colors that I got to use. I started by setting up this pink door, which has details like this handle, these latches, and a hole for a key. After installing the door on some hinges, I added this portion of the wall with the light switch. Round shapes like fingers are difficult in Lego, especially if they need to be movable. I set up the fingers with round pieces and attached the claws by threading them through these holes. I used these forked pieces to attach the knuckles that allow the fingers to pose. Since you can't see the entire monster, I just made the visible portions on the cover, which look awkward if you open the door all the way. But just as a display piece, it looks a lot like the original. Huh? 
Trouble is our next cover, undoubtedly drawing inspiration from the famous Jaws movie poster. On the cover, you can see a coral reef in the background, and purely out of coincidence, I got this free bag of summer bonus parts from LEGO a couple weeks ago after making a purchase, which was useful because of these pink coral parts that I've never had before. It also came with a bunch of other cool parts, but I don't know why it came with a Santa hat. Anyways, I used the coral pieces to set up a ton of different plants on the ocean floor, and to make the background look more like water, I added a layer of these clear blue pieces before adding the solid pieces at the very back. I attached the hammerhead at an angle using these clear pieces, and then set up a layer of water at the top of the build, with this hole in the center for the minifigure. The minifigure has his flippers and shorts, which are color reversed from the cover, since those were the pieces I had available. Overall, it turned out to be another really fun build. <laughs> Easily, one of the most requested covers I've had has been the blob that ate everyone, so I knew I finally had to try it. The story is pretty much exactly what you would expect. A huge pink blob monster begins to eat an entire town, with the book taking inspiration from the famous movie The Blob from the 1950s that has been remade and referenced in a ton of different forms. The first version I built had a very slick appearance, and it just didn't seem right. It was more like an unchewed piece of gum. It wasn't blobby enough, so I totally remodeled the outside of it, using about a million tiny round pieces to give it more texture, with its head using a bunch of pink ice cream pieces, since the one on the cover has veins and lumps all over it. Its eyebrows are adjustable, but I don't love the solid black eyes. I tried other Lego pieces, but it kinda just ended up looking like a rejected Pokemon or something. I built up the road and sidewalk next, along with these microscale houses that are each a bit different. The background fades off into the sky, where I built up these Lego clouds to give it some depth. I collected a bunch of gray parts for the trash the blob is eating. Even though it's micro scale, this blob is still big enough to eat these micro Lego figures in the town, and if you want to, you can set up a fight between it and Ant-Man, since the regular minifigure is like Giant Man in this micro neighborhood. Another highly requested cover has been Chicken Chicken. Now if you've been a fan of Lego minifigures for long, you probably know that they are constantly releasing minifigures in costume suits like llamas, giraffes, pandas, unicorns, dragons, pigs, bananas, peppers, hot dogs, and a ton more. But lucky for us, the chicken suit minifigure guy is perfect for this Goosebumps cover. The next thing I did was set up this chicken coop that we see in the background, complete with an adjustable door. Next, I built this micro barn and silo that only uses nine pieces. I sprinkled in some grass and set up some hills in the background. Up in the sky, I made these storm clouds that ended up looking extra poofy, complete with the lightning strike down below. It's the simplest cover for today's episode, but it's still pretty accurate. For our final cover today, we had to have another appearance of the main man himself, Slappy the Dummy. And this time, we're going with the original cover, Night of the Living Dummy. Now, an easy way to cheap out on this build would just be to take a Slappy minifigure and throw it against a background, but that wouldn't be interesting. So I decided to make my life difficult and create a brick-built version of the cover. A couple years ago, LEGO released a line called Brick Sketches featuring famous characters, so that's the style I decided to shoot for, with the Joker being a reference point. I started by laying out the shape of the eyes and nose. For the eyelids, I went with these curved bricks, which help make him look angry, but are a bit too thick. His teeth are a bit more 3D and built in a different direction than the rest of him, and I like how his jaw extends downwards like a real puppet. At the bottom, I used a couple of red wing pieces to make his bow tie. Even though the final product looks pretty simple, this ended up being the most challenging build for today's video. Let me know your thoughts and ideas in the comments, and see you later.